in my today's lecture i want to describe the geothermal energy source the second part of this lecture uh, i want to cover up the converting geothermal energy into the electricity there are three types of uh, process uh, from by which the geothermal energy can be processed to the electricity the dry steam power plant flash steam power plant binary cycle power plant and the hybrid power plant uh, the and the direct uses of the geothermal heat ground source heat pumps that is called the ghp now come to the first uh, topic that is the converting geothermal energy into the electricity the heat emanating from the earth's interior and the crust generates the magma which is called the molten rock because the magma is less dense uh, than the surrounding rock it rises but generally does not reach the surface hitting the water content in the rock pores and the fractures wells are drilled into this natural collection of the hot water or the steam called a geothermal reservoir in order to bring it uh, to the surface and use it for the electricity production the three basic types of geothermal electrical generation facilities are the dry stream referred to as the stream flash steam referred to as the flash and the binary power plant and the combined with the flash and binary uh, power plant the electricity production from each type depends on the reservoir temperatures pressures and each type produces somewhat different environmental impacts also in addition the choice of using water or air cooling technology in the power plants has the economic and environmental trade offs now come to the first type of uh, geothermal energy to electricity converter dry steam power plant the simplest systems uh, dry steam from the ground uh, directly into the steam turbine as shown in the figure this is the steam turbine and this is the ground steam so uh, as used in the first ever geothermal power plant in italy in 1904 and subsequently in the other places like waraki new zealand many early geothermal projects such as uh, the geysers dry steam power plant in northern california depends on high temperature steam formation to directly provide the energy to drive the power generator turbines this type of formation is called a dry steam power plant because the steam is released from the pressure of a deep reservoir through a rock catcher and then past the power generator turbines dry steam reservoirs use the water in the earth's crust which is heated by the mantle and released through vents in the form of steam the dry steam power plant is suitable where the geothermal steam is not mixed with the water the production wells are drilled down to the aquifer and uh, this is the aquifer Uh, drilled down to the aquifer and superheated pressurized steam 180 degree centigrade to 350 degree centigrade is brought to the surface at high speeds and passed through a steam turbine to generate the electricity in simple power plants the low pressure steam output from the turbine is vented to the atmosphere but more commonly the steam is passed through a condenser to convert it to the water this is the condenser the 
this uh, improves the efficiency of the turbine and avoids the environmental problems caused from the direct release of the steam into the atmosphere the washed water is then reinjected into the ground with the injection well this is the injection well uh the underground water reservoirs and feed such a system are refilled when the rain falls on the land the rain water eventually soaks back into the crust of the earth because this occurs on a continuous basis geothermal energy is considered a renewable resources about 6% of the um uh, energy used in northern california is produced at 28 dry steam reservoir plants found at the geysers dry steam field in the northern california at peak production these dry steam geothermal power plants are the world's largest single source of geothermal power producing up to 2000 megawatt of electricity an hour that is about twice the amount of electricity a large nuclear power plant can produce so a huge amount of electricity can be uh, produced uh, through the geothermal power plants these dry steam power plants emit only the excess steam and very minor amount of gases now the second type of power plant is called the flash steam power plant the most common type of power plant to date uh, is a flash power plant with a water cooling system this is the water cooling system uh, where a mixture of water and steam is produced from the well this is the steam and the uh, water the hot water is pumped under the ground pressure to the surface through this uh, drilling process when it reaches to the surface the pressure is reduced and as a result some of the water changes to the steam this produces a blast of steam the cooled water is returned to the reservoir again to be heated by the geothermal rocks again the steam is separated in a surface vessel that is called the steam separator and delivered to the turbine and the turbine powers generator Recent advances in geothermal technology have made possible the economic production of the electricity from the lower temperature geothermal resources at 100 degree centigrade to the 150 degree centigrade known as a binary geothermal plants these facilities reduce the geothermal energies already low emission rate to the near zero now come to the third one the binary cycle power plant the binary cycle power plant uses a two step process to extract the power from the geothermal water that is not hot enough produce the steam to spin a turbine by itself the water from the geothermal reservoir Uh, never comes into the direct contact with the blades of the turbine generator and it uses the water based geothermal resources of the approximately 200 to 360 degree fahrenheit in the binary cycle system the warm geothermal water is pumped to the surface through the boring or drilling and passed through a heat exchanger as shown in the figure that contains a fluid such as a butane or pentane hydrocarbon with a much lower boiling point than water the heat from the geothermal water causes 
this secondary or binary fluid to flash into the vapor. The vapor created by heating the pentin is what drives the turbine on the power generator while the cool steam from the geothermal sources is injected back into the formation where it heats up again and is available to eventually the recirculate through the heat exchanger. This is the injection well through which it is recirculated through the heat exchanger as shown in the figure. That is why the geothermal is considered a renewable source as a properly managed formation can potentially produce the power independently. The moderate temperature geothermal water is much more common than the high temperature water and many areas have been identified as having the geothermal reservoirs with the water that is below the 400 degree Fahrenheit. The US Department of Energy predicts that most of the geothermal power plants built in the future will be the binary cycle power plants that can take the advantages of this slightly cooler water. Now the come to the main important part of the power plant that is the cooling system. A cooling system is essential for the operation of the any modern geothermal power plant as shown in the figure. Cooling towers prevent the uh, turbines from overheating and prolong the facility of the life. This is the cooling tower which is attached to the uh, 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 single flash or the hot stream or the binary power plant at the output when the steam water uh, 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 will uh, come through the turbine and it is then cooled up again and recirculated. Most power plants including the most geothermal plants use the water cooling systems. The figure shows a more complex diagram for a geothermal power plant complete with a water cooling system. The water cool systems generally require the less land than the air cool system and are considered overall to be the effective and efficient cooling systems. The uh, evaporative cooling used in water cooled systems, however, requires a continuous supply of the cooling water and creates the vapor plums. Usually, some of the spent steam from the turbine for the flash or the steam type plants can be condensed for this purpose. Air cool systems, in contrast to the relative stability of the water cool systems, can be extremely efficient in the winter months, but are less efficient in the hotter seasons when the contrast between the air and the water temperatures is reduced, so that the air does not effectively cool the organic fluid. Air cool systems are beneficial in areas where the extremely low emissions are de desired or in the air regions where the water resources are limited since no fluid needs to be evaporated for the cooling process. The air cool systems are preferred in areas where the view set in is particularly sensitive to the effects of vapor plums as the vapor plums are uh, only emitted into the air by the wet cooling towers and not the air cooling towers. Most geothermal air cooling is used in the binary facilities. Now the combined type of uh, power plant that is called the flash or the binary 
combined cycle power plant it is also called the hybrid power plants a combination of the flash and the binary technology known as the flash uh, binary combined cycle has been used effectively to take the advantage of the benefits of the both technologies in this type of plant the flash steam is first converted to the electricity with a back pressure steam turbine and uh, the low pressure steam existing the back pressure turbine is condensed in a binary system this allows for the effective use of the air cooling towers with the flash applications and take the advantages of the binary processes the flash or the binary system has a higher efficiency where the well filled produced high pressure steam while the elimination of the vacuum pumping of the non condensable gases allows for 100% injection now the last part of my lecture that is the direct uses of the geothermal heat that is called the ground source heat pump these geothermal systems harness the natural heat from the underground to provide the heating for the building the ground source heat pumps have been used for the many years in north america sweden and germany now they are being increasingly developed uh, or deployed in the homes and commercial buildings in the uk with the government providing financial incentives to the owners who install them the figure shows the heat pump that is called the ground source heat pump or the ghp the ghps are made up of the three elements a ground heat exchange loop that is the ground loop ground heat exchange loop a heat pump in the middle and a distribution system above the ground so there is a three uh, layer structure is used in the ground source heat pump one is the ground loop second is the heat pump and third is the distribution unit the high density polyethylene pipes are laid out uh, underground usually in the coils to maximize the length available for every 10 meters of the pipe 1 kilowatt of energy can be absorbed from the ground the pipe is usually laid in the horizontal trenches next to the building if there is not sufficient room in the garden a bore hole can be drilled down to a depth of 15 meters to 150 meters another option is to lay the pipes in a pond or the lake the figure shows a network of pipe is buried in the ground or the immersed in the water source the ground loop transfers the heat to the working fluid in the heat pump this is the evaporator site of the heat pump and this is the condenser site of the heat pump and this is the expansion valve this is the compressor increasing the pressure raises the vapor temperature by the compressor and at last the heat is transferred to the buildings distribution system the distribution system can be either under floor heating or the radiators or the forced air systems a mixture of water and the antifreeze is then pumped around the loop absorbing the trapped underground heat around the 10% uh, 10 degree uh, centigrade the water mixture is then compressed and passes through a heat exchanger which extract the heat and transfers it to the heat pump the heat pump consists of an evaporator and the compressor as uh, shown in the figure Uh, and the expansion valve also there and uses the principles of the carnot cycle 
to increase the pressure and raise the vapor temperature up to 50 degree centigrade. The evaporator converts the working liquid to the vapor. The compressor significantly raises its temperature and pressure. The condenser transfers the heat to the building's distribution system. And then expansion valve cools things down so that it becomes once more a cold mix of the liquid and the vapor. The maximum efficiencies derived from this system are through the underflow heating or large low temperature radiations or the radiators. If the heat pump needs to reach a higher temperature, the efficiency is reduced. The GHPs generate the less carbon dioxide than the conventional heating systems. Although they still require the electricity to drive the compressor unit and the circulation pumps. If this electricity is derived from the renewables, it becomes zero carbon to run. For every unit of the electricity used to work the pump, between three to four units of the heat are meant. GHPs can also be used on large scale projects. The UK's largest GHP system was recently completed in Enfield, London. A total of 400 flats across the eight tower blocks were linked up to the eight boreholes. Each flat has its own heat pump and it is expected that the residents will see their energy bills reduced by 30 to 50%. The initiative won the 2019 district heating project of the year. There is also a market for the air source heat pump in the UK. These operate in a similar way to the GHPs but use air to transfer heat from the outside, a property to the inside. The upfront costs are lower as they don't require any digging, just a unit setup alongside. However, the air source heat pumps are less efficient than the GHPs because they are subject to fluctuating air temperatures and must work harder to produce the heat when the outside air temperature is lower. The systems exchange heat with the nearly constant temperature Tg beneath the ground at the depth of 2 to 50 meters providing the heat in winter and cooling in summer. Tg at the 2 meter depth commonly equals the annual average temperature above the ground. A heat pump is in essentially a refrigerator working backwards. A motor usually electric operating at the power PM enables the device to extract heat at a rate Pg from the air or ground of the outside environment and deliver heat flow P out for a purpose. Setting the P out equal to the C cop into PM defines the coefficient of the performance COP here with the symbol COP. Thermodynamics analysis treats a heat pump as a thermal engine in the reverse as shown in the figure. In heating mode, the PG is taken from the ground using the motor of the power PM. So the P out is equal to PG plus PM, which is delivered. PG from the ground and PM from the motor. And then collectively we will uh, the total power is Pg plus Pm will be delivered. In heating mode the COP is uh, P out by Pm that is 1 plus Pg by Pm. In cooling mode the COP is in effect of Pg by Pm. For a commercial ground source heat pump the COP is uh, about 3 to 5 depending on the temperatures at the input and the output. 
so the user receives 3 to 5 more heat with a heat pump than by dissipating the electric power directly for an air source heat pump the cop is generally less at about 2 the temporarily cooled environment is restored by renewable energy entering from the wider environment. All the air conditioners are the heat pumps and many can switch between the heating as a heat pump or cooling as a refrigerator. For a closed loop ground source heat pump that is called GHP, the PG is obtained from a transfer fluid usually the water circulating inside the pipes of a buried heat exchanger. This may be constructed as long pipes arranged horizontally under uh, typically a garden or a car park or as the vertical pipes in relatively deep boreholes as shown in the figure. These are the deep boreholes, pipes are there. The capacity factors uh, for the GHPs are small compared to the other direct uses of the geothermal heat because the GHPs are rarely used throughout the year and are open oversized for the peak summer and or winter use. The optimum theoretical performance is as a Carnot cycle operating between the uh, input absolute temperature Tg and the output temperature T out. So the COP that is called the, for the Carnot that is P out by Pm that is equal to T out by T out minus Tg with T out is equal to 298K approximately 25 degree centigrade at the room temperature and Tz is 278K, that is 5 degree centigrade, then the COP will be as 15. However, this ideal is much larger than the values of the 3 to 6 obtained in practice for the ground source heat pumps. Since the Carnot analysis assumes infinitely slow reversible process. Now come to the advantages and disadvantages of the geothermal energy resources. The advantages are this energy source is more environmental friendly than the conventional other fuel resources. A source of the renewable energy, the number of exploitable geothermal resources will increase with ongoing research and development in the industry. A sustainable resource of energy as it's always available unlike wind and the solar. A reliable source as it's easier to predict the power output from a geothermal plant with a high degree of accuracy. No fuel is required. Increase in exploration meaning that the new technologies are being controlled or are being created to improve the energy resources. It is the pollution levels are much lower compared to the other fossil fuels. Now there is some disadvantages also. The largest single disadvantage of the geothermal energy is that it is location specific. Gases are released into the atmosphere during the digging. The geothermal energy runs the risks of the triggering earthquakes. Expensive resource uh, to tap into with the high upfront cost ranging from around $2 to $7 million for a plant with a 1 megawatt capacity. Energy fluid needs to be pumped back into the underground reservoirs faster than uh, it is depleted. Management is required to maintain the sustainability. These are the references from where I made uh, this tutorial. You should go through these uh, references for the further uh, knowledge. Thank you very much.